What's up people? This is Sohra with a new episode of Absolute Beginner Tutorials for Unreal Engine 4. As we said in the previous episode, in the coming couple of episodes, I will teach you about creating NPC behavior or AI in Unreal Engine 4. In the previous two episodes, we talked about finite state machines and even created the NPC which would follow the player when it saw the player and return to its original location when, it's, when it lost sight of the player. We used NPC's blueprint to script this behavior in the previous episode. However, now we'll, we will start looking at the AI behavior tree tool which is available in Unreal Engine 4 and is much more suitable when creating complex AI in the engine. Our goal is to create a character like this. So again, the character will be able to see us, but this time when it, it chases us down, but when it gets to us, it will start swinging a weapon at us. So, before we get into the details, I want to give you a little bit of heads up here. Because this subject might, might seem a little complicated in the beginning, or a little confusing maybe, for some people. But I encourage you to stick with this and try to learn it, rather than using normal blueprints for creating your um, AI in the engine. And the reason for that is because there are a couple of advantages, big advantages when you're using AI behavior trees. This will be more clear when you start using them, but if I want to summarize them, it will be like this. It, they are much more modifiable. So when you're creating a character, it's much easier to change things and add things and build on things with AI behavior trees. It is also possible to use the same components that you have already created uh, in the engine to take them and create many different types of AI. So you will save a lot of time and effort by using these. So what are behavior trees? A behavior tree in Unreal Engine 4 looks something like this. It is basically a tree of nodes that control the flow of decision making of an AI entity. At the extent of the tree, you'll find the leaves or the tasks, which are these purple nodes. These are the actual commands that control the AI entity. For example, chasing the player, swinging at the player and so on. Forming the branches are various types of utility nodes that control the execution of flow down the tree to reach the sequences of commands best suited to the situation at hand. And you can see these nodes here. They are gray, blue, green, and we'll get into them in a, uh, in a moment. In this episode, I will talk about the basic components of AI BTs or behavior trees. I will call them BTs from now on. And in the future episodes, we'll put these basics to use to create a character that you saw in the beginning of the video. So as you can see, the tree is composed of different nodes and components that can be attached to these nodes. The order in which the nodes are executed is from top to bottom and left to right by default. And this is indicated by these small, small circles that you can see by the nodes. The lower the number, the higher the order of execution. The flow is basically controlled by the values returned by the nodes in the tree. These nodes can all return one of the three 
statuses or values at each tick. It can be a success, they can return a failure, or they can return running. Success and failure are pretty self-explanatory. Running basically means that the node is running to reach a decision, and it, it has not reached a decision yet. So what are the different types of nodes that we are going to be using? By the way, I will be using terms, the terms children and parent node uh, a lot, and you will see them a lot in all the tutorials that you look at for AI BTs in Unreal Engine 4. So I'll give a short explanation of what these are. A child node is basically a node that is under another node. So basically, if you look at this one, you'll see a root, and under it you see something called a selector. This selector is a child of this root. Or, for example, you see a bunch of nodes here. These are a child to this node, and also to the nodes above. The node that is above is then the parent. For that child so for example root is the parent for all these nodes this selector is the parents of these nodes that are under it and so on first we have the root which is a special kind of node because it doesn't have a, a no properties of its own and it can have only one child attached to it then we have a family of nodes called composite nodes which can have only they can have actually more than one children they can have they can have one or more than one children and they will process their children from left to right you can get them by right clicking on the graph and clicking on composites you will see three of them here selector sequence simple parallel we'll focus on selector and sequence which are the main ones you will use when creating AI. So what is a selector or what does it do? A selector basically goes through its children from left to right. If a child fails, it will go to the next one and it will just continue going through them until it finds a success. At which point it will return success to the parent and stop executing. If all the children fail, if it goes through all the children without finding a success, it will return fail to its parent. For example, here, this selector, if this branch returns success, then it will not execute the chase node. This branch is basically the aggro state or attacking the player. So if attacking succeeds, then we will not chase the player. If this one fails, however, then we go to the next node. And we execute this. If this one succeeds, then we return success to the parent. If this one fails, then the selector returns fail to its parent. Another node that I already showed you is a sequence node, which falls into the composite family so a sequence will visit each child in order from left to right just as a selector but in contrast to a selector when a child succeeds it will go to the next child and it will continue to do so un until it finds a failure in which case it returns failure to the parent of the sequence. If all the children succeed, then it will return success to the parent. For example, in this case, if running succeeds, the sequence will execute swinging. However, if running for some reason fails, it will not execute swinging. It will just return failure to this selector above. If 
running succeeds and then swinging succeeds too, then this sequence will return success to this semitone. The next family of nodes we'll look into, or the family of node basically we'll look into, is the task uh, or leaf uh, node, which are these purple ones you can see here. These are basically the commands to be executed by the AI, for example, running, chasing the player, swinging a weapon and commands of that kind. You can access these by just dragging, dragging out a wire from a composite node and then you will see a list of them here. There are some pre-made ones and you can make your own as well. It's important to note that these, they cannot have any children. They can have parents but no children. Then we have the service nodes that can be attached to either composites or tasks. These are special nodes associated with any task or composite which can re register for callbacks every x seconds and perform various updates and execute commands. Basically they are like our tick in the blueprint and you can they are the green ones that you can see here. There's just one of them here. And you can specify how often they take, for example, here is 0.05 seconds. You can access them by clicking on any node and then you have add service. Then, last but not least, you have the decorators, which are these blue nodes. They are also attached to, they can be attached to tasks or composites and define whether or not a branch in a tree can be executed or even single node can be executed. You can get them by right clicking on any node and then you have add decorator. And as you can see there are many different ones here that can be used and you can also make your own if need be so there is one last component i want to go through before finishing this episode and that is the blackboard component you can see if you look at the details panel under it you can see the blackboard asset and you can see one is selected here and above that you can see blackboard if you click at it, you'll see the blackboard for this AI BP. When a behavior tree is called on an AI entity, a data context is needed, which acts as a storage for variables that are interpreted, altered, and used by the nodes in the AI BP. Basically, you can think of this as a storage for the variables that are going to be used between these nodes that I showed you. So here, for example, you can see I have three variables, the four variables, but this self actor is created automatically. I create these three. For example, I have a boolean detected, which turns true when players detected. Yeah, I have a boolean in attack range, which turns true when player is in enemy's attack range, and I have a state variable too. So. With that being said, we have gone through the basic components of AI BTs in Unreal Engine 4. In the next episode, we will use these components to set up our character's logic. And later, we will even animate it. So it will look something like that. I showed you in the beginning. So that's it for this time, people. Thank you so much for watching. Please like the video and subscribe for more videos. Also, if you have any suggestions for me or any questions, comments, anything you want me to cover in the future, uh, you can leave a comment on the video. 
So thanks a lot and see you in the next video.